Another issue with some toxic chemicals is biomagnification. What that means is that a small level of the chemical is in the water and then taken up into some plant and then taken up into a little animal and then that is eaten by this, a little fish is eaten by the bigger fish and so forth. And as you go up this food chain, the concentration goes up. So that's called why it's called magnification because as you go up the food web, the concentration is magnified, it's greater, it gets much larger. And uh, this is not true of all toxic chemicals. It is true for the PCBs and DDT type chemicals. It's true for methylmercury. So what this means is that the biggest, oldest, carnivorous fish is the ones that's gonna have the most. And what do we tend to like to eat a lot? big fish. We don't tend to eat anchovies very much. We like tuna fish, right? Big old tuna fish that will have accumulated a lot of mercury over their long life. Swordfish also will accumulate a lot of mercury over their long life. So those are the ones that you shouldn't eat too often. Uh, I mean, eating a tun tuna fish now and then is not a problem. Eating swordfish now and then is not a problem. But to eat it daily, I would not recommend. Okay, some good news and well, a little bit of humor. Um, cra crabs living in contaminated Newark Bay are doing extremely well. Despite the fact that the contaminants are impairing them, they are larger and more numerous than their crabs in a cleaner estuary. And the reason for that is sign like this. People are not allowed to go fishing for them. So without the fishing, the crabs are living a long life and growing bigger. Um, ironic, you know, you think that crabs in a highly polluted place would, would suffer. But they, I mean, they are not quite normal, but they are doing extremely well if you think in terms of numbers and in terms of being big. Overall, the persistent organic chemicals, the DDTs and PCBs, are going down. I said they're still around, but they are indeed declining. Uh, they've been banned for many years, and you can see the levels slowly going down. So maybe in another 50 years, they'll be practically gone, but they're still with us, but certainly less than they used to be. Okay, contaminants of emerging concern. These are the ones that aren't regulated that may have been around a long time, but nobody paid attention. Uh, we have this, I talked about PBDEs, the flame retardants. We have pharmaceuticals. We take a pill, we take a drug. When some, we are, we're ill, we have something, a doctor gives you a prescription or uh, whatever. You take it and you, your body does not metabolize all of the pill. And you end up peeing out a fair amount of the particular pharmaceutical chemical that was in the pill. And so what happens with this, it goes into the sewage treatment plant, the sewage treatment plant doesn't do anything about it, and it goes out into the water. So you find in waters near sewage treatment plants, you find higher levels of pharmaceuticals. Uh, some of the ones um, that are found is, um, birth control pill hormones, um, antidepressants like Prozac, and these have effects on fish. They have effects on us. Fish are biochemically very similar to us, and uh, you find issues of male fish making eggs in their testes, very strange. You find occasional fish that's got both male and female characteristics, uh, from, from some of these um, hormone uh, pharmaceuticals. And then you find these antidepressants that affect the nervous system and behavior. You find abnormal behavior uh, in some of the fish. Um, okay, if anyone has ever thought about flushing pills that you don't use down the toilet, please don't. 
Uh, there's enough of that stuff comes in normally from just peeing it out, and I can't tell you don't pee. So, um, but at least don't flush the pills down. Um, as I, uh, this is saying what I said before. You get the um, sex problems in the fish and behavioral alterations. Okay, another type of pollution that a lot of people don't think of as pollution, but we might consider as biological pollution, is the issue of invasive species. An invasive species is one that's introduced outside its normal range and can produce ecological or economic damage in the new place. Uh, the major way, and we call it a vector, the way in which uh, they get there uh, is ballast water from ships. Ships, big con uh, container ships, on the voyage that is not got the containers, where the containers are empty, have to weigh themselves down so to, for stability crossing the ocean. So they take in millions of gallons of water into ballast tanks. And they get to the other port and get ready to load up with, with cargo, then they release this ballast water. So the ballast water got picked up in one port, millions of gallons, including whatever little critters might be in it. And then they cross the ocean and they go to this new port and they release that because they're going to be picking up new heavy cargo in the new port. So um, this ballast water is by far the largest way in which marine animals get transferred from one part of the world to another. And as we have faster ships and more and more trade, uh, we get more and more invasive species moving. So this is just a look at um, ballast water and ships and, and that sort of thing. Um, other sources, ballast water is not all there is. There's, there's bait industry, live seafood, aquarium trade, aquaculture, pleasure boats. Pet owners can sometimes decide they got tired of their pet exotic fish and dump it in a nearby body of water. Uh, sometimes scientists have done bad things. And canals can be a way for things. I mean, the Suez Canal, for example, was a really good way for things to move um, between the from the, into the Mediterranean. Uh, here's just a few notorious marine invaders. We have the green crab. We have the common reed, Phragmites. We have um, Caulerpa and algae. Uh, we have the uh, comb jelly. This comb jelly is native here. Not all invasions come to us. We have lots of our natives have become invaders somewhere else. And the, this comb jelly got to the Middle East and to the Aral Sea and uh, caused a great deal of trouble. Uh, and this is uh, probably the most severe damaging one, this beautiful fish called the lionfish, which is a part of reefs in the Pacific, uh, perhaps got released from aquariums in Florida because that's what was first found off Florida in the early 90s and then has spread up as far as the Carolinas and then down through the Gulf, through the whole Caribbean and the South Atlantic. And it's a very good predator and it eats the native coral reef fishes. The coral reef fishes don't behave afraid of it. They've never seen anything like this before. They've never, they don't know it as a predator, so they'll go right up to it and then they get swallowed. So it is, it is reducing nat normal native coral reef fish greatly. They are trying to control it by having uh, competitions for spearing it and killing them. And the good news uh, here is that um, you can eat them. You can spear a lionfish, cut the, they, the, the spines are toxic, so they get cut off. And then you can cook it and eat them. And there's a restaurant in New York City downtown that serves them sometimes. So, uh, and they're delicious. This was my meal there, uh, this picture. So uh, that, that's a little bit of good news. We'll never get rid of them. The only hope is to keep their populations at some low level rather than um, huge population explosion. 
Another good news, the Coast Guard is now requiring ballast water to be treated with ultraviolet light, which will kill a number of the, um, the invasions, invader organisms, before the water is released. So some steps, but so far we have problems. Now this was an interesting paper. The tsunami that happened, the, the Fukushima thing in 2011, uh, we are now finding washing on shore in Hawaii and the West Coast debris from the coastal Japan that got torn off by the tsunami. And this the debris, being plastic, lasts a long time and brings with it various species that came from Japan. So they're keeping an eye out and studying all the new species arriving in Oregon and Washington and California uh, that came, took a few years to get here, but they, you know, starting 2016, stuff started arriving uh, and could easily be identified as, as that it had come from uh, Japan from that tsunami. <laughs>